o'clock. I'm Leonard Kaplan along with Ed Whittier with our special guest, Spencer Yates. How's it going, buddy? Special guest wrestling commentator. <laughs> I like it. Throwing a curveball at me, huh? Yes. Hey, I mean, Actually, you, well, you didn't get the approval. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another curveball at you. What now? Reopen the show. You open the show. I'm not reopening the show. Re reopen the show. Hi, I'm Ed Whittier, and this is Wrestling Talk. He's Leonard Kaplan. He's Spencer Yates. How was that? You feel better? I feel much better. <laughs> wow. Anyway, it's November 2nd. Yes. Which is Election Day here in Massachusetts and I think uh, all of New England. Maybe the entire country. The whole country. All, what oh, is it? The whole oh, country. Yep. The whole country. Voters are coming out record numbers, but we're not going to talk about politics. Well, either. actually, something related to politics, because as we all know, in the world of professional wrestling, yes. Linda McMahon, the wife of the CEO of World Wrestling Entertainment, yep. is running for Congress. Senate. For Senator. Senate. Yes. And on last night's Raw, there was a very strange skit that strange, McMahon did. Strange. Yeah. All right, look. She wants the world to take her seriously. Am I, are we going for this here? Yes, right? we are. Okay. Right then and there said to me that she does not expect to win. Because they the, absolutely. Only because they showed Vince McMahon in a coma? Not only was he in a coma. <laughs> I mean, help me out here. And he came out? Not, help me out here. But he, she, he had the opponent's, her opponent's uh, banner yeah. on his butt. Yeah. I actually thought that was the only thing worth a plot rod worth stop to watch. <laughs> I actually I was watching it this morning on my DVR, and I was just like, this ought to be something. Oh, it was something. I'll and, give it that. And then they had Stephanie in bed with Triple H. They didn't really show him, but they intimated that the whole thing was a dream. Right. Yeah. Now, you don't have dream sequences on something that's supposed to be real. Right. You know, and right. allegedly... They're trying to create, remember what wrestling is, the definition of wrestling is, you're staging a, an event, an entertainment event, designed to look like a contest. Correct. Okay, so it can't look like a contest if you have dream sequences and skits and vignettes and backstage stuff. What I believe what was happening there was uh, due to all of the negative campaigning that her opponent did against her, I think that was Vince McMahon's special way mm -hmm. of telling him where to go and how to get there. Yeah, and he didn't Basically really to kiss his A-double crooked letter. So in other words, he didn't care about the election. He didn't care about making money. He just cared about sticking it to somebody at that moment. Well, I think she's down in the polls anyway. Yes. So no yeah. one's really expecting her to win. Yeah. So that was the, their way of just saying, you know what, it's all for a laugh. Right. And Vince, right. Vince himself, the opening thing was say, I hate politics. And I thought it was kind of funny because he came out of a coma the second the guy said, your wife has spent fifty million dollars, and he yeah. pops out of the, and he has bumper stickers all over his chest. I thought it was pretty funny, yeah. especially for something on Raw, because I mean, watching Raw can be abysmal at times. Well, I, I'll tell you, and, and, and speaking of that, uh, it, it, as of late, the employees of Raw, and I think this goes for the talent too, has seemed to have been forced. Uh, into doing this stand up for WWE thing. Basically, let's all uh, kiss the backside of our boss and our organization, which, you know, it, to me, I think is a very personal thing. I, should, I don't think mm. you should have to come out and, and on television and verbally say how much you love your boss, or how much mm -hmm. you love the organization mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you work for. Um, I understand where they were coming from because mm. uh, the, uh, the uh, I don't know if this was due to the opponent or what the story was, but they tried to limit. Um, people wearing WWE uh, right. t-shirts and whatnot at the polls, which is not something you can do. You can't tell somebody what they can and cannot wear. Right. Especially if it's, quote, unrelated mm -hmm. to either candidate, which technically it would be. Right. Because you can only tie the WWE into, into Linda McMahon through her past experiences. Right. But if it says WWE vote for Linda McMahon, that would be a problem. If you're wearing a, a, a John Cena t-shirt or something to that effect. Right then there shouldn't be a problem. Even but though they, asso they associated that right. Pro uh, Absolutely. Job I, well, I mean, I think business. Vince McMahon will use any opportunity he can to promote his company. And whether she wins or loses, that's free publicity for the WWE. I oh, mean, without a doubt. I mean, they used to always love it to, like, you'd, you'd see some wrestler going back to, like, Diesel or whoever was the champion at the time. You'd always see them, like, with a camera crew following up. Hey, look, it's Diesel taking, you know, softball lessons with, like, you know, some softball team and that was just that was just free publicity for him and 
Vince, I think the reason why he did that stand up for WWE thing because it's in the best interest of the wrestlers because wrestling is such a negative image now since the whole Benoit thing. Oh, absolutely. And so when you have, when this is like, hey, you know, we have enough negative publicity. If you guys want to continue making a living doing anything, we got to kind of just say, hey, we're not bad people. That's a good point. Oh, no, and I'm not saying that they are bad people. It's just that sometimes to me, and maybe it's just the cross between his character and his real personality. It just seems that his ego sometimes takes over. Right. Oh, absolutely. And sometimes I, I think that he can't get a hold of it. <coughs> um, and you know what? He has the power. He has the viewership to do exactly what you're saying, to affect a lot of people, not just for her campaign, but to kind of strike back out of the people who kind of thumb their nose up uh, at professional wrestling and such. What? But to me, it's things like that little performance that he did with the whole sign, as funny as it, as it was, it was a little shocking as far as I was concerned that if she was taking her candidacy uh, seriously, I would have thought that would have been a negative uh, in her direction. Oh, I think, that, I think, I I think, think it's her way of just saying, you know what, I pretty much have this lost, let's just have fun with it now. Because I mean, they, have, they basically, for the most part, they really haven't mentioned it on television, at least I've seen. Right. Since her race started, you know, what, a year ago or, right. or so? I think it's kind of a leap to assume that she's not taking her candidacy seriously. You know, he, I mean, just because he's her husband doesn't mean that he can't do that. Maybe she didn't even know about it. Well, they tried every opportunity to tie her with WWE at every point right. that they could. Right. They brought up the whole barking angle yeah, and, and the whole Trish thing, Stratus all that all stuff, that. which was definitely not going to shed good light on her. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to say, how can you take this person seriously? Look at the things she's done, mm -hmm. okay? Even though it's an entertainment business, mm -hmm. it was done purely for mm -hmm. entertainment, whether you liked it or you didn't like it, whether you thought it was tasteless, uh, it's neither here or there. Mm -hmm. they, they constantly tried to rope that in. And uh, again, you can bring up the Benoit stuff. You can bring up mm -hmm. all of that negative side. Right. That was definitely not going to help her out. Now, I will be <coughs> editing this show, so if McMahon, Linda McMahon wins the election, I will be putting that on the screen so that the show will be updated. Oh, that would be good. You know what I mean? Well, like I do with every show, when we forget things or people's names. Do you want to bet money I on this one? Because I'm betting she's going to lose drastically. Well, well, and, and, maybe. well uh, as of showtime now, um, I did look it up, and it said that she it projected that it was double digits uh, in the other guy's favor. Really? Yeah. yeah. So it, it'll be interesting to see. That's now, I don't sad. follow Connecticut politics, so I, yeah. I'm not going to know either right. way, but that's just Neither that's do I. I, just saw, I just saw the numbers like a week ago, and it just didn't sound good for it. And there's so much, I mean, they have 20 years of just things they could throw at her, just from right. the stuff from the W. whether it's her fault or not, like the Benoit right. thing. I don't think you could really relate that. The Owen Hart thing, you right. can't really tie it, but they're going to try to. I mean, Oh, that's that's politics. Yeah. The, the dirtiest players in the game, really. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Now, on that note, we're going to segue out of that. And I just want to mention, before we start mentioning wrestling news, that I happened to see a movie on Netflix made in 1950, which I had no thought of it being related to professional wrestling, but it okay. actually was. It was, was with Richard Widmark, who was a star of the 50s, 60s, 70s, and he's passed on now, but he was a big star in the 50s, 1950. It was called Night in the City. And it had Stanislav Zabisco in it. Say that name 10 times. Stanislav Zabisco. <laughs> I'm not going to do it because we don't have time. <laughs> right. And, um, and who, who was the other one I just mentioned? Who was the other one I mentioned off camera? The, yeah. other, the other wrestler? Anyway, I'll put that on the screen. These well, you mentioned George Hackenschmidt. No, no but era. I mentioned there was another wrestler oh, in, the, in, in the oh, movie, too. I must have missed that. But um, it was about wrestling, the wrestling yeah. industry in, in England, which at the time in 1950, they were transitioning from the Greco-Roman style catch to more entertainment style, not quite what it became later. Right. But I, I found it very interesting because they actually had a match in there. Really? In the movie, yeah. The English catch wrestling was the basis of pro wrestling here. That's why Billy Robinson was such a good shoot wrestler, because it was a real sport. You and have an English background. That's yes, I do. Why and, you that, know this. and that was that's the basis for mixed martial arts. As the, pro wrestling really? and mixed martial arts have the had basically the same foundation, because professional wrestling used to be a shoot, yeah. and until Ed Strangler Lewis kept beating everybody, and then he was like, I can make some money by having this guy beat me, and then I'll win the belt back, and it worked. So and when did that happen? Uh, like 1920, yeah, 30. Yeah, I mean, the only, 
I know during, I read somewhere during the stock market crash and during like the whole Great Depression, the only two industries that made money were professional wrestling and the insurance companies. No kidding. And it was basically because people wanted to see stuff like that. People love violence. So that's when it happened. Yeah, roughly about. So then, you know, the argument between the older wrestler and the younger wrestler in the movie was that, you know, this isn't real wrestling and only I'm the real re thing. And, right. and it, was, right. it was very, very heated. And, uh, you know, what would that, that, in today's world, that younger wrestler would be the old guard. Right? Right. What would he say to today's wrestling, you know? Well, I think if you, if you were to compare, let's say, um, your typical wrestling match from the 80s yeah. to your typical wrestling match, if you can even get one in, yeah. of today, right. yeah. good point, right? Um, you're going to see a lot of high flying. You see a lot of spots. Mm -hmm. Whereas back then, it's almost, I don't want to say it yawned you because I'm, I, 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 rest hold. I, no, I grew well, up with that. But yes, a lot of rest holds. It was storytelling. They, exactly. they, had, they had time to build a match in the ring. And it's right. like you had to keep topping it and build up the story. Right. Now they don't have yeah. time to build up a story. So you get a bunch of kids on there that can do backflips off the ropes, and they're going to go, OK, I got five minutes. I'm going to do three moonsaults, dive over the ropes, and none of it will make any sense why they're doing it. Right. That's right. half of, I think, that's what's lost about today's wrestling is there's no storyline build up. Well, that's why when you find somebody who's good behind the mic, uh, you know, good appearance, uh, good facial expressions, and can talk, and can wrestle, eventually they get to that storytelling in the ring if they're allowed to have the time right. to do it. And that's, that's key, because you're not going to get that on today's television. Now, I can't yeah. speak for TNA because, and I've readily admitted this, I don't watch enough of it. Yeah. Um, and, and I hope to change that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, since... Uh, Did you take NXT off your schedule? NXT's no longer on television. They've okay. transitioned yeah, now. They put that on because the Because they were no one abysmal. It. What was your thoughts on that? I mean... I never you, watched it. it was, I, I, you know, did you watch the other ones, or did you, watch, did you stop watching when they, when they I, well, went to I, the third edition? I watched... Uh, I watched I remember when, the, when it was the re uh, renewed ECW program, I watched that, and I watched it almost with a bottle of Pepto next to me because yeah. I was like, I, I was one of the few people who actually watched the original ECW that was on the Spanish channel at one in the morning. Oh, yeah, I remember. And, <laughs> and I remember watching that, and like, you know, it's, people kind of look back on it with rose-colored glasses, but it's like, I remember the original ECW being okay. It was, I mean, it was good. They had some yeah. decent wrestlers, but the undercut on some of those shows was pretty bad. But sure. So uh, when I watched this, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to keep it an open mind. And then it was exactly what we all figured it would be, McMahon's version of ECW. Right, and right. After that went off the air, I didn't bother because I knew NXT was just going to be a complete disaster. You know, it, it's funny because the, the whole formula that they had for it was interesting because it was different. Uh, personally, I liked the whole Tough Enough series. And then that got to the point where it became silly. And now there's talk that they're going to bring Tough Enough back. Yeah, I was just so, reading that. They're yeah, going to put it on so, USA. But apparently, the, unfortunately, the, the female wrestlers, that just, it bombed in three weeks. And it was, so, it was so bad. I remember watching one episode, and I said, I can't believe that I'm watching this on my DVR. It just, it's, it, it was, I tried. Yeah, no. I really tried. You, can't really, you can't really blame the talent for that. You no, got, no, I'm not blaming like, the talent. I'm no, not. It's, uh, it's, like, yeah, it's like you watch the way they prepare their shows, and it's like, it's like you can almost watch it within the first five minutes. You can just basically say to yourself, especially if you're an older wrestling fan like we are, within like the first five minutes of watching the show, you're going to be like, this will be off the air in a year. Yeah. Yes, or but do you know what they're going to have on the web version of NXT? Oh, oh do the tell The wedding us. of gold dust. Oh, I can't, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> that actually would probably be kind of <laughs> worth watching. They Is should have put that, that on television. Is that why they've been pushing gold dust lately? No. Uh, no, he has no. a book coming out. Thank That's you. why they're pushing yes, gold dust. Yes, he does. And ah. frankly, they should have been... I, here's a guy that can actually wrestle, can talk, and can do the entire like nine yards, yeah. and they're pretty much just going to job him out. They're going to give him a little bit of a push just yeah. to, to sell his book, and then they're going to sooner or later job him out. Probably. And, hey, you know, that's that's what, a good prediction, because let me just see. I wrote it down. His book is due out December 7th, so what do we figure? Uh, done by the new year? After, a little yeah. after the new year? He's kind of young to have a book, isn't he? And, well, he's been through a lot. He's, I mean, he he's grew got around. a family, too. Yeah, he, yeah. he grew up the son of the American dream. I mean, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a couple books right there. I guess. You know? yeah. But the only thing that disturbs me about that is, is if we see the WWE version of what he's going to say. That always bothers me. Yep. Is this a WWE book, or is this going to be... Uh, obviously, it is. 